Hey Geometry, we are Unit 3, Lesson 3, um, Measuring Dilations. Again, if we were in the classroom, we'd be using compasses and straight edges um, and just touching things with our hands. So we're going to be using GeoGebra to the best of our ability to model this a little bit better. So if we look at this, it's dilating out. So we're going to dilate triangle FGH using center C and a scale factor of 3. Um, what we would do in the classroom is draw rays from C through F using a straight edge. And then C through G, making it just long, you know, and then C through H. Then I'd be taking my compass and putting the pointy end at C and measuring to F. And then pointy end to F and draw a little arc. So that'd be one, two, and then pointy end there, three. And that would be F prime. All right, so let's do that with GeoGebra. We're going to use the circle function instead of the um, measuring tool. It'll make better sense. It'll just look a little messy. Um, so let me get to GeoGebra. So I've already drawn triangle GHF. What's it, how would order they do it in? FGH. Um, so now let's draw some rays. So the ray. Here we are. Ray. So we're going to draw from C through F, C through H, and C through G. And then we will take our circle and just measure from C to F. That circle almost doesn't look circular, does it? Um, and now I'm going to take my compass and just duplicate it. So that's one, two, three. So one, two, three. We took our original and we multiplied it by 3. Now I'm going to put, well, let's do an intersection. This circle and that line. So that D is going to be, really, we should rename it. Let's do that. Ooh, ooh, we don't want to do that, though. <laughs> Aw, took away my intersection. I did the undo and I shouldn't have. All right, so let us change this name. We really want that to be F prime. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and hide these things. See if it worked. Except that's a B. I don't want that to be a B. Cool. I don't think it's going to work. That's okay. We got it. Cool, huh? All right, let's now do the next one. So I'm going to draw a circle, center C through G. Doesn't look like a circle. So weird. And then I'm going to use the compass tool. So I'm going to copy this circle, but put it up there, and then copy it again. And there. So I just did one, two, three, and now I'll mark that intersection. And we're going to name that G prime. And hide that, 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 maybe that. Cool. I couldn't hide the E. That's all right. And let's do it again. Circle and then copy it. So we'd be doing this literally with our compass on paper. So copy that. Copy it again. And then show that intersection. Hide some things. So many things. And rename this 
to h prime. I'm in my classroom and my lights just turned off. Ugh. If I don't move fast enough or don't move enough. So now we have our dilated triangle. It looks three dimensional, doesn't it? Isn't that cool? Um, yeah, we did it. That's all I got. Let's go back to our curriculum. Um, yeah, yours, well, let's do this. Yours and your book would look very much like, find it. It won't let me get back there. I think my face is in the way. Just like that. Okay, so we did a great job. All right, moving on. So here in this activity synthesis, Hmm. F. I don't know what we did because that triangle is not correct. Display the image for all to see and ask students why it's incorrect. So if we look, that right there isn't in the right place. Okay, we dilated it the wrong direction. That's the wrong direction. Okay, it needed to go this direction, out here somewhere. Okay, so H is not correct. Okay, so here um, is a center of dilation and a triangle. So let's talk through the steps real quick. It says measure the sides of the triangle to the nearest millimeter using your ruler. Your teacher will assign you a scale factor. Predict the relative lengths of the original figure and the image after you dilate it by your scale factor. Okay, dilate it. How does your prediction compare to the image you drew? Um, and then use tracing paper to copy point C, triangle EFG, and your dilation. Label your tracing paper with your scale factor. Align your tracing paper with your partners. What do you notice? Okay, I'm going to pause for a second and get back to GeoGebra. We're going to do this one more time. All right, so I'm going to construct a triangle. It's not going to have the same letters. I'll try to make it approximately the same shape. Um, and a point. Okay, not the same letters. Now, we can easily measure. I think, yep, just by clicking on the sides. I'm going to move that. Now, I need to construct those rays um, that will help me construct my new points. So I go down here, I grab ray. I'm going to do something a little bit different this time. So let's construct all the rays. Look how the point of dilation is outside the triangle this time. Alright, so I can actually take these rays and make them dash, kind of like that. So they'll look a little bit different. It'll help us with our construction. Now, this time I actually use the polygon tool because I'm going to show you how um, transform dilation from a point works. So I can actually click on my triangle and click on my center and do a factor. So we've measured each side of our triangle. Let's cut the triangle. Let's scale it by a factor of a half. So we're going to make it smaller. And then we're going to look at all of our measurements. Um, I can't tell. So I think that one was four, three, two, one, four, nine. All right. So four, nine is pretty close to five. Okay, we're going to have some rounding errors here. Half of five is two and a half. Four, three. Um, pretty close to 4, 2, <laughs> and half of 4, 2 is 2, 1. 2, 4, 2.4, half of that is 1.2, which is right there. So the measurement of each, the measurement of each side of our triangle got cut in half also. All right? All right, let's do another one. Um, let's do a dilation by a factor of 2, because that's easy math to do also. So we're going to click on our 
back or our figure, click on our point, and we're going to do a dilation of two. Ooh, so 4.8, 4.9 times two um, is actually 9.8. 2.4 times two is 4.8. 4.3 times two is, let's see, 4.2 times two is 8.4 plus two more, five, six. Yep, 8.6. I don't know why I needed to do it that way. That didn't make sense, but it's 8.6. All right, so each time you dilate down, the measurements of the sides of your figure get cut in half. Well, when you dilate by a scale factor of a half, your measurements get cut by half. When you dilate by a scale factor of two, your measurements go up by two, et cetera, et cetera. If we did three, everything would be three. Um, let's see if I can show you something. If I take this one and delete it, and that one and delete it. Let's actually do a scale factor of a half for that figure that's left. And where will we end up? Way small. So we took each one of these and scale factor of a half. Pause for a second. Hey, that wasn't right. There must be something with GeoGebra because um, that scale factor didn't work. So I just measured from D to G, so from the center of dilation to that vertex, and I got 2, and then the center of dilation to that vertex and got 10.1. So that's not the scale factor that um, works out. Okay, beside the point, this a scale factor of one half should have gone back to the original because we undid everything, but that's okay. All right, let's see where we are. Okay, now let's go here. What stays the same? Dilute quadrilateral AB, dilute, that's funny, dilate quadrilateral ABCD using center P and your scale factor. Um, and then complete the table, okay? So we're measuring P to A prime and P to B prime. Okay, let me set this up in GeoGebra and I will be right back. All right, so I measured all the sides and um, we're gonna do a scale factor. Notice I don't have the rays <clears throat> drawn this time and that's okay. Um, with GeoGebra, hold on a second. A frog in my throat this morning. Um, with GeoGebra, I can dilate without those rays. I just wanted to show you how that worked because if we were in the classroom, we would be dilating with the rays. So I'm going to select an object, select my center, and let's go ahead and do 1.5. Okay, so it got bigger by a factor of 1.5. We move some of these to make sure they sort of go with each thing. That's there. Yep, we got them all. All right, now I need to write these down in that table, okay? So I'm gonna make a note really quick of all of these measurements so that I can put them into that table. All right, what's different is your book. Um, this is C and that's D. So that'd be C prime and D prime. Um, but I'm going to, well, it doesn't matter. Yeah, okay, be right back. That was difficult. So if you look here, I drew segments from the point of dilation, center of dilation, to the pre-image and measured it. All right, so if I have from here to A, it's, gosh, Oh, pen, 5.7, nope, so 5.7 was on the bottom. And then um, same measurement from, so from the center of dilation to there um, was 8.6. And then we do from here to B, 6.3, 6.3, and then there to B prime, 
was 9.4. This is really important, that's why we're taking the time to do it. To C, so 5.3. And then to C prime, 7.9. And then to D, 4.9, nope, sorry, 3.3. And 4.9. Okay, I'm going to simplify those fractions. 8.6 divided by 5.7 um, is, keep it in fraction form, 3 halves approximately, which is 1.5. 9.4 divided by 6.3, fraction form decimal form, 7.9 divided by 5.3, fraction form, decimal form, 4.9 divided by 3.3. I mean, this is all rounding. There are, what was our scale factor again? Cool, huh? All right, let's do one more thing. Now we're going to complete this table. So here we have um, B A over B prime A prime over B A. So B prime A prime is 6.2 and B A is 4.1. C prime B prime 4.1. C B 2.7. D prime C prime was 5.8. And CD was 3.9. A prime, D prime, 4.2 and 2.8. Handy dandy calculator. I think that's 6.2 divided by 4.1, 1.5. 1 4.1 1 divided by 2.7, 1.5. You guys get the picture? 1.5. 4.2 divided by 2.8, 1.5. And what was my scale factor again? Do you remember? My scale factor was 1.5. So what do we notice? Dilations, they're not rigid, but it holds all of the, um, the segment measurements. All right, all of them. If you take an original figure and you multiply it by a scale factor, all of the segment length measurements, be it the ray, how you use the ray to dilate it, or the actual sides of the figure you're dilating, are all dilated the exact same amount. Okay? It's pretty cool. And that's it. That's what we've done. Here, one last important thing. Okay? I wouldn't talk about it if it weren't important. Um, let's see, we have, we have P to C prime is three to one. Okay, so PC ratio, P to C prime is three to one. And then we have BC, B prime, C prime. So BC, the ratio, is BC is two thirds? Nope, two to two thirds. So how did we get there? Four, let's not do that. What's our scale factor? Scale factor. It's all related. All right, good job. We'll stop that for now.